This is the video for 9.3, and here we're going to be looking at significant tests about a population mean. Uh, I want you to think about the relationship between a confidence interval and a significance test for a population mean. Um, so keep in mind, we're going to use Z for proportion, for a p-hat, T for a sample mean. Um, and that holds true except for when we know the true standard deviation for a population mean. So for the most part, that works for us. The only time where we can use Z for a population mean is if we know the true standard deviation, since the standard error is based on that. So when we use T, remember we use N minus 1 degrees of freedom. So we're going to look at it through the lens of an example problem. So here we have uh, data for an SRS of speeds of vehicles passing through a given construction zone. The city wants to see if a significant amount of people are driving over the speed limit. So they take this SRS and here's the speeds that they get. Note that 25 would be the speed limit. They want to, their question is, can we conclude that the average speed of drivers in this construction zone is greater than the posted 25 mile per hour speed limit? We're using alpha equals 0.05, meaning that if there's less than a 5% chance that we get this sample, given that the true value is 25 miles per hour true, then we can reject the null hypothesis. So let's just take a look at the general template for answering these problems. So we state the problem. Uh, we're going to say what our null hypothesis is. That always has an equal sign. Our alternative, if we can reject the null hypothesis, we can assume the alternative. Based on the, the question, we're going to look at the context of it to decide whether this will be greater than or less than. If there's a hunch that it's going to be a bit above or below the, the null hypothesis, or a not equal to sign, as, is, as was the case in the fraud example we looked at in class for 9.2. Then we'll define the parameter. From there, we will decide whether we're going to use Z or T, depending on whether it's a proportion or a sample mean. Uh, we'll use T as long as we don't know the true standard deviation of the population. We'll check our three conditions, random, normal, and independent. Keep in mind how these are similar uh, as far as what they let us know about the sampling distribution, but how they're different for proportions and sample means. And then we're going to calculate the test statistic, um, and that's going to depend upon whether we're using T or Z, which is why we looked at that in the plan step. Then conclude by comparing our p-value to 0.05, since that's our standard. So let's go through this problem. So the proposed parameter is that people are actually following the speed limit, and the true average is 25 miles per hour. Uh, we state that we're testing it at the alpha equals 0.05 significance level, meaning that our test statistic, if it's less than, if its plausibility is less than 5%, we can reject the null hypothesis and assume the alternative. And then we define what mu equals. So mu, a sample mean, or a true mean is what we're trying to get at, is the true mean speed of drivers in this 25 mile per hour construction zone. We're using t, t for a sample mean because we don't know the true standard deviation. We just have our sample standard deviation. Uh, we have an SRS, so we know the mean of our sampling distribution should equal the true mean. Uh, we're not. We don't have a biased, uh, biased SRS, a biased sample, that is. Uh, normal. Now, n is less than 15, so we have to do a quick, or uh, n is less than 30. And we're not told whether the population is normal or not. So we have to do a quick uh, box plot is what I would do. You can look at a dot plot, too, if that helps you. Make sure you do the box plot that shows outliers. Um, when you do that, you'll see that there's no outliers. Uh, the quartile one's a little bit bigger than the other three, but there's not a, there's no there's not a ton of skew. It has to be, if it's heavily skewed, we couldn't go on. So that means it's robust to this con condition. That means the condition's met. I mean, even though we're not told the population's normal and n isn't 30, we can, we can move on and assume normality still works for us as a good approximation. Independent, we can assume there's more than 100 drivers. That's a fair assumption. So we've just done state and plan. Now we're going to go ahead and do, do and conclude now that we can know we can do our calculations. So here's a quick refresher about our test statistic. We use T since we don't know the true standard deviation. S sub X here represents the standard deviation of our data set. X bar is our sample mean we get. Uh, the value we're subtracting from, we're assuming the parameter, the hypothesis is true. So in this case, this would be 25. And our sample size here was 10. Uh, and we'd say degrees of freedom would be N minus 1. 10 minus 1 is 9. Now you can use TCDF, which is like normal CDF. Um, if you calculate this by hand or on using the table or you can just do the um, stat calc t-test which is a much easier way and if you need to be walked through that it's in 9.3 
on page 573, or you can check the calculator functions that I've given you. So let's take a look at our problem. So you can do all this with your calculator, which I encourage you to do right now. So pause and go to stat, test, t-test on your calculator. Now, you're also going to have to enter our data. So our data was this up here. This data set, if you want to pause now and enter that, so you can go through this. So your calculator calculates the test statistic. Here's our sample mean minus the proposed parameter to see how far away in terms of standard deviation we are from 25. So 3.05. We know um, standardized scores, um, that means z-score, or in this case, our test statistic is t, that are above 3 and below negative 3 are very rare. So we already know that this is going to be a very small p-value, meaning there aren't very many percent of the values that are going to be that far away from the parameter. This indicates that it's unlikely that 25 is legitimate. Like we're saying, people are going much faster on average. So on your calculator, you can go to stat, tests, t-tests. It's number two. Uh, we have data here. So you're going to highlight data, then go down to, you'll see mu naught. That's your null hypothesis. You put 25 there because that's what we're saying it equals. Go to list L1. You should have added your list of the, the values that we had from our sample. Then below that, frequency 1. We only put in a different frequency if each value from our table appears um, more than one time, or we have a frequency table that tells us that. Then below that, you're going to see the alternative hypothesis. There's not equal to, less than, and greater than. We're going to select greater than because that was our alternative. Then go to draw. It'll draw you the normal curve, and it's going to shade the area that represents the p-value. Now in this case, it's going to be really hard to notice it because our p-value is so far to the right it barely even appears when your calculator shades it. You can notice it just, uh, to me, it doesn't even look like a difference because it's so small. So a very, our p-value um, is 0 0.0069. That means 0.69%. So that's a very small percent of the time. That means if the true value is 25 miles per hour, only 0.69% of the time would we get 28.8 as our average with a sample size of 10. Um, so there's convincing evidence that the true average speed of drivers in this construction zone is greater than 25 miles per hour. So you'd reject the null hypothesis. Now, you've seen the work there. Your multiple choice question is going to be, given our conclusion here, what kind of mistake a type 1 or type 2 error could we have made? Remind yourself what type 1 and type 2 is. Now here's our little chart about what type 1 and type 2 is. So this column represents if the null hypothesis is true. This represents if it's false. This row represents rejecting our null hypothesis. This represents failing to reject. So use this in order to determine what type of error we could have made. Pause now if you'd like to keep looking at it. So based on the result of the problem that I just walked you through, um, which one of these could we have made? Type 1 or type 2 and why? Feel free to go back on your outline or anything in your book or on the video. And then also comment on the relationship between a confidence interval and a significance test about a population mean as the free response.